Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at a nonlinear, and I think I forgot to put in the non, so let me do that. How about nonlinear distribution of charges? So here we have three charges, one positive, two negative charges. And again, we're trying to find the electric field at a particular location. So we put it right there at the corner of this rectangle. Makes it a little bit more convenient, but it doesn't have to be there. It could be anywhere. Right? It doesn't matter that it's on the rectangle, it could be at any location. It just makes it a little bit easier to work out the problem. Notice the distance between these two charges being 3 meters, the distance there is 4 meters. Notice how we label the charges, and here are the instructions on how to go about it. It's very similar to before with one extra step. Since it's a nonlinear problem, we're going to have to calculate the x y components of each of the electric fields due to the three charges present. The first step is still the same. We're supposed to draw the electric fields at the location of interest due to the presence of these three charges. So, due to charge number one, Q1, we know that the electric field emanates away from the charge. So let me draw a dashed line across, so kind of see that. So there we go. And that means that when we get to this point right here, the electric field will be away from this charge. Now, since that charge is the farthest away from the three charges and it's the smallest magnitude wise of the three charges you expect that electric field to be the smallest so let's call this E1. Now let's go to Q2. It's a negative charge so we know the field goes towards that it doesn't actually go there but it points towards the charge it's a larger charge it's closer so we expect a bigger electric field in this direction so let's call this E2. And then we have Q3, which is the biggest of all the charges, but it's a little bit further away. So relatively speaking, it's roughly the same size as E3, but it's going to be pointing towards this direction. And so this is what it looks like. And now we realize that it's going to be the vector sum of those three electric fields that will then make up the, the total electric field at that location. So it's going to be a vector sum. Now two of the three electric fields are either in the x or the y direction so we do not have to find the components but the third one here will have to find the two components of that so that means we're going to have to find the e1 in the x direction and the e1 in the y direction in other words we need to find the x and y components of e1 otherwise we cannot add the vectors all right that said, now we're going to find, the next thing is we're going to find the magnitude of each of the vectors. So E1, E2, E3. So E1 is going to be, and again it's the magnitude, not magnitude in the direction, so it's not a vector quantity. So E1 is going to be equal to K times Q1 divided by the distance from that location to Q1 squared. So in this case, that's 9 times 10 to the 9th. Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times Q1, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, divided by the distance. Now notice that this is 3 meters, this is 4 meters, and so that means that the diagonal must be 5 meters, right? Because that's going to be the square root of 3 meters squared plus 4 meters squared. Take the square root of that, so that's equal to 5 meters. So it would be equal to 5 meters, and we have to square that. And that gives us the magnitude of the electric field caused by the first charge. So 9e to the 9th times 4e to the 6th minus divided by 25. And we get 1440 newtons per coulomb. So we do that the same for the other two charges. So the magnitude of E2 is equal to K times Q2, if it helps, because I'll put an absolute value signs around it. We don't care about the negative sign divided by R1, uh, R2 squared. So there would be 2, make it a little bit bigger, squared is equal to, okay, we have 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Multiply that times, uh, let's see here, Q2, right there, 6 microcoulombs times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by that distance squared. So distance is 3 meters squared, so 3 meter squared. All right. So for that we get 9e to the 9th times 6e to uh, 6 minus hmm, divided by 9 equals, we get 6,000 newtons per coulomb. And then we find e3 and that's equal to k q3 divided by 
r3 squared, so in this case that would be 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times q3, the magnitude of that, that would be 8 times 10 to the minus 6 and the distance, now that would be 4 meters squared 4 meters squared, and let's see what we get there so we have 9 e to the 9th times 8 Ooh, 9 e to the 9th times 8 e to the 6 minus divided by 16 and we get 4500 it's a little bit smaller 4500 newtons per coulomb that kind of makes sense because it's a larger distance than in this direction and since the distance is squared it would have a bigger effect all right so there we go we have the magnitude of the three electric fields now remember for E1, this one right here, we're going to have to find the x and y components, which means we need the angle. Let's find the angle there. And so we can see that the tangent of the angle, the tangent of theta, because this angle is the same as this angle, that's going to be equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is equal to the opposite side is 3 meters, the adjacent side is 4 meters. That means that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 over 4. There we go. Okay, so 0.75, take the inverse tangent. We get 36.87 degrees, 36.87 degrees for the angle. And now we're ready to find the x component of electric field one and the y component. So for number three, we go E1 in the x direction is equal to E1 times the cosine of theta. So in this case, E1 is 1440 newtons per coulomb. Multiply that times the cosine of 36.87 degrees. And let's see here. So we take the cosine of that. That's 0 0.8 times 1440. 1440 equals, and we get 1152. So that's equal to 1152 newtons per coulomb. Now that's going to be in a positive direction, but we'll take care of that later. The magnitude E1y is equal to E1 times the sine of theta, which is equal to 1440 newtons per coulomb, multiplied times the sine of 36.87 degrees. So that would be 0 0.6 times that, so 1440 times 0 0.6, we get 864. So this is equal to 864 newtons per coulomb. There we go. All right, so now we have all the X and Y components of all the electric fields at this location caused by the three charges that caused them. Now, for part four, we're going to add up all the X components and all the Y components. So E total in the X direction is equal to, so look for all the X components. We have E1X and it's to the right, which means it's a positive. So it would be E1X, and might as well just write it, right? So it would be E1X in the positive X direction. And we have E, oh, I didn't put the subscript down. How about E3 there? That's negative, so that would be minus the magnitude E3 in the X direction. All right, so X direction, we have 1152 newtons per coulomb in the X direction, minus E3, and E3 is minus 4500 newtons per coulomb in the x direction and so that becomes 4500 divided by this that would be uh, 3348 3348 newtons per coulomb in the x direction let's put a line here so we don't get confused all right is that correct uh, yes it is all right so how about e total in the y direction and of course i need to make that into vector quantities because they are vectors Y direction, so we have E2 which is positive, so that means E2 in the positive X direction minus, because E1Y is in the negative direction, E1Y, oh, this is Y direction, not X direction, Y direction. Okay, there we go. So E2Y, E2 is 6,000 Newtons, that's positive, 6,000 Newtons per Coulomb in the Y direction minus E1Y, which is right here, minus 864 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. And when we add those together, we get 5,130 
36 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. So now we have the x and y components of the final result. So now we can write that the electric field that we're looking for is equal to 3,348 newtons per coulomb in the x direction minus, 50, oh, not minus, plus. They're both positive. Plus 5,000. Wait a minute, something is wrong here. This is a minus. Minus, because that's bigger than this, so it should be minus. All right, so this is a minus. Minus 3348 newton per coulomb plus 5136 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. And there we go. That is the final result we were looking for. In vector format, and the signs indicate the directions. And that is how it's done. Now, maybe what we should do is kind of draw that, right? So we have a negative in the x direction and a positive in the y direction. So negative 33, positive. So it kind of looks like this. I would say this is E total right here. So this is the vector representation, more or less, uh, what we have here. And that's the net, the net electric field at that location caused by those three charges.